In this episode of Motive Garage presented by Spares Box, we're at Croydon Racing Developments to check out and pick up our refreshed 3.2 litre RB3026. In our last episode, you saw that our GTR basically got, well, completely stripped. Why? Well, we had a lifting head on our RB3026 as we were pushing that small exhaust housing on the G45 just that little bit too far. So the engine was out, came here to CRD to basically get a new head gasket and get a bit of a check over. Now, Con knew that we wanted to take the car to the USA and we'd do quite a fair bit of racing. So rather than just slap a head gasket and bearings in it, he actually had the engine completely pulled down. We sent the head away to get completely inspected, measured it up and it was in perfect condition. Obviously new head gasket went back in with the ARP studs. And the other thing is we decided to pull fresh bearings in it but on inspection it was actually in pretty good condition considering it's done hundreds of passes over the last couple of years over 5,000 kilometers of driving and as you know it's a lot of hard driving in that 5,000 k's multiple eight second passes they were in pretty good condition but we decided to replace them anyway so essentially we have a refreshed engine ready to take to the USA now this engine was ready to pick up but what you can't see looking from this angle is there's currently no sump on here and that's because Herman's on the way here right now so we can do another little upgrade <music> The engine was nearly ready to go. Herman gave me a call and said, Andrew, you don't have enough PRP products on your engine, right? What? You could always do with more PRP. <laughs> so I had a situation where an American friend of mine called and said, listen, I know your PRP billet dry sump is, is overkill for what I need with my 1500 horsepower. Like, no, how did you get that? He said, well, you know, it's on the two and a half, three thousand, three and a half thousand horsepower cars. And I'm like, right. We've marketed that well, true, but it also does your 1,000 horsepower cars. And we all know that aeration is a problem and a 1,000 horsepower, pull after pull after pull on the highway or the track or roll racing or whatever, you start to build up all this foam in the oil and you want to start reaping the benefits of a dry sump system and it's on the edge. It's a, do I run an accumulator and do I run all this? You've done, I've done all that. All that. I've done right? the big sumps, I've done the accumulators and, and everything. So. Yeah, and yeah, you can live without a dry sump. Yeah. But a dry sump starts really becoming worth its weight in gold after a thousand horsepower. So who do I know that makes over a thousand horsepower? Probably should go dry sump, hasn't yet? Me. Uh, look, I'm a big believer of dry sump. We're building a Group A car that only makes 500 horsepower. And like for me, as soon as you add a corner, dry sump, right? But in my application, obviously we made a wet sump work perfectly fine for quite a while, but I want to take this to America. I want to be able to drive it on the street. I want to be able to roll race it, drag race. I want to be able to run after run after run after run. And I figured that by going dry sump now, it's gonna be even more reliable than what it already was. It's good to see now the dry sump is now a kit. Obviously the first few prototypes that got used on cars was still testing out combinations of how it works, but now it's pretty much a complete kit. It's got all the, the nuts, the bolts, the bearings, the plugs, all the, the gaskets, seals. everything, right? So uh, we've got all the pulleys, we've worked out all the combos, because with a brace, without a brace, yep. billet block, cast block, they're all different. So now we've got all of the different combinations worked out. Then we've got a couple of fittings and hoses, but we hope to have the whole plug-in kit off the shelf, tick a box. So. so from here, I've already removed my sump on my perfectly ready to pick up engine. So for those watching and want to know what we have to do, obviously we have to pull the sump off, we have to pull the oil pump off, uh, so we can put an oil pump block off on. We have to take this front diff housing now over to Gearbox Masters and Sean will pull our old diff apart and basically build this new diff. But the good thing is we can build it separately and bolt it on later, right? Yep. Like we don't have to do it straight away. Obviously we'll get the new sump on, the pump on, uh, and a few other little bits and pieces we have to change with the combination with pulleys and things like that. And we're gonna switch to your, an ATI balancer that's part of your kit with your attachment on there for the dry sump. So essentially, all of the front end now will be completely PRP. Yeah, we're gonna to go to a pro trigger kit, so yep. we'll see the benefits of doing that. And uh, also we have to have a discussion, are we gonna leave the mechanical fuel pump on the cam, which has been great, but now we've got an option to put it down the 
bottom underneath the air conditioning compressor and it doesn't look so defectable. So anyway, we'll have that conversation and see what we turn out. This thing's going to stick, keep getting pushed and we'll end up with bigger turbos, no doubt. And you're going to go and show those Americans how to America yeah. with an RB. So I'm going to stay 76 mil and cast block for a little while and um, embarrass some people in the US first. And then um, who knows what happens from there. You know what I'm like, I always say that's enough, but here we are. And deep down, I really want you to put a hole in this block so we can <laughs> go to phase two. We'll see what happens, right? We will be pushing it, so let's go. So Con and Daniel from Croydon Racing Developments have my engine finished and ready to pick up. Now before I take you on a tour of everything we had to do to get this car dry sumped, I want to show you our new merch. Check it out. A new Jet RH9 t-shirt. PRP GDR Festival, GDR badge on the front, available from our online store, modivideo.com.au, right now. So the first thing that had to be done when converting over to the billet dry sump was get this front differential built. Now we took it over to Sean from Gearbox Masters who builds all of our differentials and gearboxes, does repairs, etc. And he had to remove the crown and pinion out of the factory uh, sump and diff, put it into this, press all the bearings in, put our Quaife front LSD in and essentially check all the tolerances, assemble it correctly. While he was doing that, the guys at CRD had to pull quite a few things off the engine. Now you think that going dry sump, you just swap the pan. Well, that is actually incorrect. Some of the things we had to change, you have to remove the factory oil pump and put this PRP oil pump block off on the front, which holds the front main seal and also holds the pro trigger kit. And to get that off, you have to take the brace off as well. So it was sump off, brace off, you have to get rid of the pickup tube, oil pump off, disassemble the whole front of the engine again so you can basically put it all back together. And what have we ended up with? Well, now we've obviously got the PRP integrated dry sump pan. As you know, the pump attaches straight to it, which means there are no lines coming from the sump to the pump. So it's neater, it does work better, and you get to control that oil flow. We've got the oil air separator on the back, which means it doesn't froth up the oil as much, so you have much cleaner oil. And because we're gonna drive ours on the street, I think this is very, very important. Switching to dry sump also opened up a rabbit hole on a lot of other parts of the engine. One of them being that we had to switch balances over to the ATI super damper because the PRP dry sump kit, the attachment on the front, is compatible with the ATI balancer. There was nothing wrong with our previous Ross balancer at all. It was just more about using it in this kit, exactly how PRP sells it. We've switched to the Pro Trigger Kit, so we had to install the PRP disc on the back here, the 36 tooth. You can see the sensor on here. While we're at it, we obviously switched to a billet pulley for the water pump. Uh, we've got our TAH Products billet cam cover to fit on this engine now. We've switched to obviously the top trigger kit for PRP, and then we've obviously had a nice new red one matched with our grey double cast bracket for the fuel pump. What starts off as just changing 
the sump does actually turn into a lot of changes on this engine. So next up, we're gonna get this back to the workshop. We're gonna mount the inlet manifold, the exhaust manifold, the turbocharger. We're gonna take some measurements. There's a few little tweaks we have to do with how we're gonna run the lines and things like that. We'll get it into the car with the new gearbox for the thing, new clutch, get everything together, then we'll start the plumbing and the wiring. So there's a lot to do on this fresh build before we take it to the USA for GTR Festival in Texas, November the 15th to 17th. We're gonna show the Americans how to GTR, that's for sure. So make sure you subscribe, and you don't miss out on this pretty crazy GTR engine build.